should systems like GPT-4 be open sourced in whole or in part? Can you make the, can you see the case for either? I think the answer right now is no. I, I think the answer early on was yes. So we could bring in the, all the wonderful great thought process of everybody on this. Uh, but asking, should we G open source GPT-4 now is just the same as if you say, well, is it good? Should we open source um, how to build really small nuclear weapons? Should we open source how to make bioweapons? Uh, should we open source how to make um, a new virus that kills 90% of everybody who gets it? Of course we shouldn't. So it's already that powerful. It's already that powerful that we have to respect the power of the systems we've built. The knowledge that you get from open sourcing everything we do now might very well be powerful enough that people looking at that can use it to build the things that are really threatening again. Let's get it. Remember, open AI is GPT-4 is a baby AI. Baby, sort of baby proto, almost little bit AGI, according to what Microsoft's recent paper said, right? It's not that that we're scared of. What we're scared about is people taking that who are, who might be a lot less responsible than the company that made it, right? And uh, just going to town with it. That's why we, we want to, it's, it's an information hazard. There are many things which um, yeah, are not open sourced right now in society for, for very good reason. Like how, how do you make certain kind of very powerful toxins out of uh, stuff you can buy uh, at Home Depot? You know, you know, we don't open source those things for a reason. And uh, this is really no different. So, uh, open and I'm saying that I have to say it's a little, it feels in a bit weird, in a way, a bit weird to say it because MIT is like the cradle of the open source movement. Yeah. And I love open source in general, power to the people, let's say. But um, there's always going to be some stuff that you don't open source. And, you know, it's just like you don't open source. So we have a three-month-old baby, right? When he gets a little bit older, we're not going to open source to him all the most dangerous things he could do in the house. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it does, it's a weird feeling because this is one of the first moments in history where so, there's a strong case to be made not to open source software. This is when the software has become yeah. too dangerous. Yeah, but it's not the first time that we didn't want to open source a technology. Technology, yeah. Is there something to be said about how to get the release of such systems right, like GPT-4 and GPT-5? So OpenAI went through a pretty rigorous effort for several months. You could say it could be longer, but nevertheless, it's longer than you would have expected of trying to test the system to see like what are the ways it goes wrong to make it very difficult for people, well, somewhat difficult for people to ask things, how do I make a bomb for $1? Or how do I uh, say I hate a certain group on Twitter in a way that doesn't get me blocked from Twitter, banned mm -hmm. from Twitter? Those kinds of questions. Yeah. Uh, so you basically use the system to do harm. Yeah. Uh, is there something you could say about ideas you have? It's just on looking, having thought about this problem of AI safety, how to release such system, how to test such systems when you have them inside the company. Yeah, so a lot of people say that the two, two biggest risks from large language models are It's spreading disinformation, harmful information of various types, and second, being used for offensive uh, cyber weapon design. I think those are not the two greatest threats. They're very serious threats, and it's wonderful that uh, people are trying to mitigate them. It's a much bigger elephant in the room is how is this just going to disrupt our economy in a huge way, obviously, and maybe take away a lot of the most meaningful jobs. And an even bigger one is the one we spent so much time talking about here, that that this becomes the bootloader for the more powerful AI. Write code come. connected to the internet, manipulate humans. Yeah, and before we know it, we have something else, which is not at all a large language model that looks nothing like it, but which is way more intelligent and capable and has goals. 
<laughs> and that's the that's the elephant in the room. And and uh, obviously, no matter how hard any of these companies have tried, uh, they that's not something that's easy for them to verify with uh, large language models. And the only way to be really lower that risk a lot would be to not let, for example, train, not tr never let it read any code, not train on that, uh, and not put it into an API, and uh, not uh, not give it access to so, so much information about how to manipulate humans. So, but that doesn't mean you still can't make a lot, a ton of money on them. You know, uh, we're, we're going to just watch now this coming year, right? Microsoft is rolling out the new uh, Office suite where you go into Microsoft Word and give it a prompt and it writes the whole text for you and then you edit it. And then you're like, oh, give me a PowerPoint version of this and it makes it. And now take the spreadsheet and blah, blah. And you know, the, all of those things I think are, um, you can debate the economic impact of it and whether society is prepared to deal with this disruption. But those are not the things which, that's not the elephant of the room that keeps me awake at night for wiping out humanity. And I think that's the biggest misunderstanding we have. A lot of people think that we're scared of like <laughs> automatic spreadsheets. That's not the case. That's not what Eliezer was freaked out about either.